All right, boys and girls, you have made it to the last video of the series. Man, so I got a new speaker in the house, so I figured I'd do a quick little series where I do these short videos and talk about the, the new speaker, which is the Bose Soundlink Flex 2, compared to this array of speakers that I have here. If you are following in order, which you should be, uh, so if you skipped around, go back and watch it in order, then you can kind of understand what I'm doing here. First video, I compared it to the Charge 5, uh, the Bose beat up the Charge 5. Well, it really didn't beat it up. It's just that I prefer the mids and the the bass. Like the bassiness is, is very comparable, right? It's, oh man. It's, it's, I think it might be a little boomier at mid to low volumes, but it's the mids that get it for me with the, um, with the uh, the Bose Soundlink Flex 2, as well as higher volumes. Higher volumes, this thing absolutely falls apart. This one stays intact just a little bit better. It still kind of falls apart a little bit, but it's just not as bad as the JBL Charge 5. Second video was the uh, Soundcore. This joint right here, the Soundcore Motion 300. It kind of beat up on this one a little bit, even though they share the same, you know, aesthetics as far as like the form factor. They both have microphones for taking calls, which I absolutely love. Uh, Soundcore does, you know, does their own sound coring, but they could not, they could not outdo the Bose. It just, it just not a competition for me because the mids in the uh, Soundcore Motion 300. When you listen to the speaker by itself, it sounds fantastic. But once you uh, listen to a Bose Soundflex, I keep saying Soundflex, Soundlink Flex 2, you understand how off these mids are in the Motion 300. I'm not saying you can't EQ it because they do have a broad EQ in there, but ain't nobody got time for that, man. You just really want to turn your speaker on, set it and forget it and enjoy your tunes. And then I compared it to the JBL Flip 6, which was an absolute trouncing, okay? It, it trounces this speaker. Uh, they keep up with each other, neck and neck, as far as high volume goes, as far as, you know, like overall volume, I should say. But when it comes to bass and uh, the, the balance of highs and mids, you definitely gotta go with the Soundlink Flex 2, and especially for the bass. Uh, it's just, to me, this ain't even a competition. This is like, it's a great speaker. I absolutely love it. Not talking trash about the JBL Flip 6, but when this thing walks into the room, you're just going to look at it and be like, damn, I should go get one of these. That's just pretty much how it is. But now we have to talk about, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Dude, I, I got to call Samsung back. Dude, I've been calling Samsung and been on hold with them this whole time. And I, I need to go pick up my, my item that I ordered and I want to pick it up like early because I don't want to be in that traffic. Anyways, I've digressed. I'll start telling you about my personal problems. Got to compare it to the Sony, okay? The Sony Alt Field 1. When this speaker hit the streets this past summer, I went crazy because I was like, man, Sony's back. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I really still love this speaker. I love the design that it's different from pretty much everything else out there I could find. I love that it has a microphone for phone calls. I even love this colorway. They have a few colorways that I think are very interesting. This is actually my favorite, this bright orange right here. But then when you start comparing sound, okay, uh, that's a different story. <laughs> Sony has Alt 1 and Alt 2. Now with Alt, um, not Alt 2, I'm sorry, Alt on and off. There's only one Alt mode. With Alt off, it's better for listening to YouTube videos, maybe some classical music or something like that. But I do it for podcasts and, and, um, and YouTube videos. Alt 2 is where I turn it on if I want to listen to some music and I get the better sound out of that. Uh, get a little bit more bass and stuff. It's alt, ultimate, okay? But then Bose, Bose ain't playing no games, man. You ain't got no button. They just give you good sound. And that's what I appreciate out of this. So as far as sound quality goes, I feel like you definitely get a lot more bass out of the Bose somehow. Uh, but Bose is kicking ass all across the board when it comes to bass. It's not just Sony that is beaten up. So you get more bass for sure. As far as mids and highs, both of these are nice warm speakers. I like the way both of these sound as far as like, you know, the warmth. It's not too warm. It's not too soft. You know what I'm saying? It's not muddy at all. It's got just enough brightness to make you feel like this is the speaker I need to be listening to all the time. And so for this particular comparison, I, got, I hate to do it to my boys at Sony, but Dude, the Bose is bozing and you know, it is what it is. Sound is like food, you know what I'm saying? And you know, okay, sound is like food. This right here, 
This is a good meal that you have cooked for yourself and it tastes absolutely freaking delicious, okay? You would definitely order that again. But this right here, this is mama's cooking, okay? Well, unless your mama can't cook. If your mama can't cook, this ain't mama's cooking. But it, okay, you go to grandmama's house. This is big mama's cooking right here, okay? <laughs> this is big mama's cooking. I really, I really do love the sound that comes out of this speaker. And I really enjoy doing these videos because I get to listen to it. So, hey man, if you're curious about it, go ahead and pick one up, man. See for yourself. But until you get that done, make sure you listen to this video clip I'm about to give you. And then we're going to ride out because this is the last video of this little mini series that I'm doing on the Bose Soundlink Flex 2. And y'all keep being good to each other and I'll see you when I see you.